Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested in my attempt to start using Scott Satterley's 10 shot load development technique with the Hornady 147 grain ELD match and Hodgkin's Superformance, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Now, if you're new to this series and you haven't seen the videos I've done yet, I'll put a card up so you can go check out that playlist. And what we're doing today will probably make a little bit more sense. But feel free to stick around if you like, and you can watch that later. If you've caught the last couple of videos about generating velocity curves, you'll know that some of the velocity curves that I generated were actually during the fire forming process, which for the record, I do not recommend. However, today's video is not that. We're starting off with some several firings on our Hornady brass. It's freshly annealed, sized, and ready to go to start generating some good velocity curves with this powder and bullet combination. So guys, in today's video, we're simply just going to discuss the velocities that we got at the certain charge ways we got, and let's just get into the load data. The brass for today's video is actually Hornady Standard Large Rifle Primer Brass. Our powder is Hodgkin Superformance, loaded from 44.2 grains all the way to 46.6 grains in one-tenth of a grain increments. The primer for today is CCI 250 Large Rifle Magnum Primer. The cartridge overall length we loaded was 2.840 inches. If you're unfamiliar with this technique, the technique I'm using today is loosely based on the 6.5 guys video that they did on Scott Satterley's 10 shot load development technique. The chart you see now is actually from data on their videos. Basically what we're looking for is these nice plateaus in the graph where the charge weight actually changes but the velocity doesn't. And for reference we're going to call this a velocity node. In our efforts today, we're actually trying to duplicate this with our testing and see if we can find any velocity nodes. And by finding one of those nodes, hopefully we'll be able to achieve a lower standard deviation, a lower extreme spread, and pick those certain charge weights to do our load development with this combination. In case you're interested, the source of data actually on this is the 6.5 Creedmoor data for their 150 grain Sierra Match King hollow point bow tail projectile. Though, not exactly the same. The velocities it, seem, it seems to be able to achieve with a slightly heavier projectile are very interesting and we thought we'd try it out. If you're a fan of the channel, you might actually be aware we've actually tried this bullet powder combination quite a while back, but certainly didn't achieve the velocities that we hoped to. Hopefully today's video will change all that. But that all being said, let's get into the chart. As you can see, starting off at 44.2 grains, we started at 26.16 feet per second. And at 46.6 grains, we maxed out at 27.54 feet per second. Certainly no slouch for a 147 grain projectile in the 6.5 Creedmoor. You guys can be the judge, but looking for good nodes in this particular area is certainly something I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Certainly not saying that they are, but possibly around 46.1 grains and possibly even possibly around 46.5 grains. With that slight inversion, maybe there's something to be found there, but who knows. Somewhere around those velocities are where we found velocity nodes in prior tests, but this graph certainly isn't as pretty as I would like it to be, but who knows what's really there actually. There's the graph you guys can have to decide for yourselves. In addition to recording the velocity data, I actually recorded this on video. So let me roll that video here and you guys can see it. So as they're shuddering as that was, guys, you will be able to see that from 44.2 grains all the way to 46.6 grains, our total group size was actually 1.854 MOA. Not our best, but certainly not our worst either. But if you guys thought there was a good velocity or accuracy node in there, I thought I'd give you guys a video so you guys can go and review the charge weights to see the impact points, and you guys could go back and look at that to your heart's content. So guys, like in every video, let me put a shot of the brass on the screen. 
You guys will see as we start on the bottom and go up to the top, we might see a slight bit more primer flattening on the primers, but there's certainly no other marks on the case, no ejector marks or no other signs of pressure. Certainly no heavy bolt lifts or anything were experienced during this testing. I'm fairly sure that everything we loaded was actually safe to shoot in my rifle. But since the charge weights today are significantly over Hornady's published data for this projectile, that's something you guys will have to decide for yourselves. Certainly don't take my word for it. As far as the load workup is concerned with this powder and bullet combination, I'm really not sure where to go. I certainly would have liked to have seen a larger velocity node. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is there something here that I'm missing? If you guys saw this, where would you guys pick your five charge weights to load over this range to see if you could find something worth shooting? Like I mentioned, the primer used for today was the CCI 250 Large Rifle Magnum Primer. Maybe by switching to a different primer, we might get a little bit of performance. I really haven't reran any of these velocity curves with different primers yet to see how or if that actually shifts these curves around. Neck tension might also be something we go on in the future, but if you guys have any input, I would really love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it informative. If you have any questions or comments on the video, please put those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button, and like always, until next week, stay safe in small groups.